Good afternoon, and hello with the jail. Can I have your name, please? Tyrell Henderson, Your Honor. Tyrell Henderson? Yes. Fourteen B District Court is now in session. This is Magistrate Hillary Braley presiding. Now calling case number two four S zero 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 four five. This is the State of Michigan versus Tyrell Henderson. Can you please state your name for the record, sir? Tyrell Henderson. Thank you. Thank you. What I have here is a misdemeanor complaint that charges that on or about May 24th of 2023 at 2721 International Drive, apartment 1610C, you did fail to provide an animal with adequate care and or negligently allowed an animal to suffer unnecessary neglect, torture, or pain, and it did involve the animal's death. That is otherwise known as cruelty to one animal involving the animal's death. Do you understand that charge? Yes, Your Honor. Who? And okay. Yeah. That is here. Okay. It that is a misdemeanor with a maximum penalty of up to one year in jail, a two thousand dollar fine with court costs or both. Do you understand that potential penalty? Yes, ma'am. Count two alleges that you did fail to provide two or three animals with adequate care and or negligently allowed two or three animals to suffer unnecessary neglect, torture, or pain. That is otherwise known as cruelty to two or three animals. Do you understand that charge? Yes, Your Honor. That is a misdemeanor with a maximum penalty of up to one year in jail, a $2,000 fine with court costs or both. Do you understand that potential penalty? Yes, Your Honor. And did you have a chance to review an advice of rights form? Yes. Okay. Do you have any questions about your rights? I don't know. Say that one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Attorney Plumai, your appearance. Yes, Your Honor, Assistant Public Defender Alexis Plumai appearing with and on behalf of Mr. Henderson. Um, and to address bond, I believe the bond recommendation from the prosecutor's office in this case is for a personal recognizance bond. Um, but I would note that my client has been in jail for the past 276 days on another matter and bond is still denied on that file. So I would just respectfully request um, a very low cash bond just so that he can start to accrue automatic time credit on this case. Okay, thank you. The court will set your pre-trial conference date as April 16th, 2024. That will be at 9 a.m. over Zoom before Judge Washington. And the court will set bond with the following conditions. You are not to use or possess alcohol, marijuana, or illegal drugs. You are not to leave the state of Michigan without the court's permission. You are not to purchase or possess a firearm, ammunition, or other dangerous weapons. You are not to engage in any sort of criminal activity whatsoever. You are 
to appear for any and all dates set for you by the court. So that next one for 14B district court being the April 16th date. You are not to uh, purchase, possess, or adopt any animals in the interim. You are, okay, I think that is everything then. Uh, at this time, the court will set a PR bond. Attorney Plumai, if you don't have anything else, and sir, if you don't have any questions for the court, then uh, this hearing is concluded, and sir, you are free to stand up and tell the jail that you're finished. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Can I have your name, please? Juwan Barber. Juwan Barber. Okay, thank you. Give me just a moment. It put that note in on on base, so it's it's there. Um. Now calling case number two four S zero 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 four six. This is the state of Michigan versus Juwan Barber. Mr. Barber, can you please state your name for the record? Barber. Thank you. What I have here today is a misdemeanor complaint that alleges that on or about November 25th of 2023 at I-94 at or near Huron Street, you did operate a motor vehicle on a highway while having an alcohol content of 0.17 grams or more per 100 milliliters of blood. This is otherwise known as operating with a high BAC. Do you understand that charge? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. This is a second offense. You were previously convicted of operating impaired on or about April 26, 2023 in the 35th district. Therefore, while this is still a misdemeanor, it has a maximum penalty of up to one year in jail, a $1,000 fine with court costs or both. Do you understand that potential penalty? Yes, Your Honor. Count two alleges that you being the driver of the Ford Escape who knew or had reason to know that you had been involved in an accident on I-94 near Huron Street on that same date. 
did fail to immediately stop the vehicle at the scene of the accident and remain there until you had complied with the requirements of the law. And that accident resulted in damage to a Honda Accord, a vehicle driven or attended to by another individual. That is otherwise known as failure to stop at the scene of a property damage accident. Do you understand that charge? Yes, Your Honor. That is a misdemeanor with a maximum penalty of up to 90 days in jail, a $100 fine with court costs or both. Do you understand that potential penalty? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Did you have a chance to review an advice of rights form today? Uh, yes, I signed it earlier when the uh, officer came and got me. Okay. Do not believe I have that yet, but do you have any questions about your rights? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Attorney Plumai, your appearance? Yes, Your Honor. Assistant Public Defender Alexis Plumai appearing with and on behalf of Mr. Barber, and um, he would stand mute as to the charges to address bond. He is a local resident. He lives with his family in Ypsilanti. He does have one minor child who he cares for and supports financially. He's employed full-time as a facilities manager, um, and he does not have any other holds or open cases, and he states that he's not on probation or parole at this time. So I would just ask for a personal bond with the standard OWI conditions. Thank you. So, Mr. Barber, your pre-trial conference will be set for April 16th at 9 a.m. That will be over Zoom before Judge Washington. Okay. And the court will okay. The court will set bond with the following conditions. You are not to use or possess alcohol, marijuana, or illegal drugs. Prior to your release, you are to be fitted with a scram tether. Within 24 hours of your release, you are to report to community corrections for drug and alcohol testing. You will need $12 and a photo ID. Do you know where community corrections is? Okay, so community corrections is basically up the hill from where you are right now. So it's in the same campus as the jail and as the 14A1 district court. It's labeled re-entry center. Okay. Okay. You are not to leave the state of Michigan without the court's permission. You are to appear or actually first, you are not to engage in any sort of criminal activity whatsoever. And you are to appear for any and all dates set for you by the court. So that includes that April 16th date. That also includes going to community corrections within 24 hours of your release. Do you have any questions about any of those conditions? No, Your Honor. Okay. Then at this time, the court will set a personal recognizance bond in this matter. So that means that you're promising to appear for that April 16th date. And I should note that if you fail to appear or if you violate any of the bond conditions, then a bench warrant may be issued for your arrest. The uh, bond conditions will be entered into the law enforcement information network. So they will be readily available to any police officers that you may come into contact with. And if they have reason to believe that you have violated a bond condition, they can arrest you on the spot and you will be held for a bond violation hearing in front of the judge who may revoke your bond and set a new, more restrictive one. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Do you have any questions about any of that? No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Then at this time, Attorney Plumai, do you have anything else? No, thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Then, sir, this hearing is concluded. You are free to stand up and tell the jail that you are finished. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you.
Good afternoon. Are you Mr. Kierdorf? Yes. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Now calling case number 24T00107. This is Ypsilanti Township versus Brandon Kierdorf. Can you please state your name for the record, sir? Brandon Kierdorf. Okay, thank you. What I have here is a misdemeanor complaint that alleges that on or about March 19th of 2024 at 3051 Roundtree Boulevard, apartment B2, you did make an assault or an assault and battery upon Annalie Rose Burgess, a person with whom you reside or formerly resided, and a person with whom you have or had a dating relationship. Do you understand that charge? Yes, I do. That is a misdemeanor with a maximum penalty of up to 93 days in jail, a $500 fine with court costs, or both. Do you understand that potential penalty? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Thank you. Did you have a chance to review an advice of rights form? Um, yeah, I was given one to sign, yes. Okay. Do you have any questions about your rights? Um, no, not particularly. Okay. Attorney Plumai, your appearance. Yes, Your Honor. Assistant Public Defender Alexis Plumai appearing with and on behalf of Mr. Kierdorf. And to address bond at this time, or apologies, he would stand mute as to the charge. And to address bond at this time, he is a local resident. He's actively seeking work. The complaining witness in this case is his girlfriend, but he did state that he is able to find somewhere else to live for the time being. And we will um, confirm that address with him as soon as he figures that out. He has no open cases, he's not on parole or probation, and he has no holds on him. So I would just ask for a personal recognizance bond with the standard domestic violence conditions, which I did explain to him, and he does fully understand those. Thank you. Okay. The court will set your pretrial conference for April 1st. That will be at 9 a.m. over Zoom before Judge Washington. Okay. And the court will set bond with the following conditions. You are not to use or possess alcohol, marijuana, or illegal drugs. You are to report to community corrections within 24 hours of your release for drug and alcohol testing, you will need $12 and a photo ID. Do you know where Community Corrections is located? Yes, I do. Okay. You are not to leave the state of Michigan without the court's permission. You are not to purchase or possess a firearm, ammunition, or other dangerous weapons. You are not to engage in any sort of assaultive, threatening, intimidating, harassing, molesting, or otherwise annoying behavior towards Annalie Rose Burgess or anyone else. You are not to go to the 3051 Roundtree Boulevard address. And when the court says do not go, what the court means is, I don't care if you are personally invited to return to that address. You do not go back while that condition is in place. If you need to collect anything from that address, you may do so on a civil standby, which means that you <clears throat> go to the police department and request an escort to and from the property. Do you understand that? I do. Okay. You are not to have contact with Annalie Rose Burgess. And when the court says no contact, what the court means is no first person contact, no contact through the mail, no contact over the telephone, via phone calls, text messages, emails, social media, the internet in any way, shape or form, or through third parties. 
Finally, you are to appear for any and all dates set for you by the court. So that includes that April 1st court date. That also includes going to community corrections within 24 hours of your release. These conditions will be entered into the Law Enforcement Information Network, which means that they will be readily available to any police officers that you may come into contact with. And if they have reason to believe that you have violated one of these conditions, they can arrest you on the spot and you will be held for a bond violation hearing in front of the judge who may revoke your bond and set a new, more restrictive one. Do you have any questions about that or about any of the conditions? Oh, just about um, going to community corrections to drop. You said I needed to do that twice in the, after 24 hours after being released or just one time? No, it, it's so you're going to community corrections within 24 hours of your release. And they will set up whatever schedule. Okay. 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 Do you have any other questions? No, Your Honor. Okay. At this time, the court is going to set a $10,000 personal recognizance bond. Attorney Plumai, do you want to explain that? So basically what that means is you can leave the jail today without paying any money. Um, you're promising to come back for your next court date and to comply with those bond conditions. But if you violate your bond or you fail to appear at your next court date, um, when, when you're picked up on the bench warrant that will issue for that, um, your bond will start at $10,000. At this time, if you don't have anything else, Attorney Plumai, and sir, if you don't have any further questions, then this hearing is concluded and you are free to stand up and tell the jail that you are finished. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you.